The idea that I could build my own home from start to finish was first introduced to me when I was about 19 years old. One holiday weekend, I was given the opportunity to travel with Cedar and her family down to meet her grandfather, who had built his own adobe home from start to finish by himself at the age of about 72 years old. After meeting him, there was something inside of me that was drawn to what he did. I would ask him questions about the adobe bricks that he cast himself. He would tell me that he could make as many as a couple of hundred of these adobe bricks in one day. I would ask him what the costs were associated with it. I then figured out that he was able to build this entire adobe home for cash that he had saved. He had no mortgage on this place. The more I picked his brain, the more it seemed to light a fire inside of me to want to do something similar to this. For years and years, I researched building out of adobe. I looked at rammed earth. I looked at cob, even straw bale. I was regularly looking at alternative building methods to do something like this while I was living in a subdivision, paying homeowners association fees. I refused to let this passion for building my own home go away, whether I knew it or not. I bought old books on different ways to build cabins and different cabin notches. I tried to figure out if any of these building styles would be applicable in the Southwest. For some reason, I always loved the idea of using adobe or the earth to build a house from. I would read old books about homesteading and early pioneers, and this was a common practice. I would go down and visit my sister in Mexico and regularly see adobe homes down there as well. It was very common for early homesteaders to use the earth to build some sort of a shelter, whether it was a sod house or a dugout or even an adobe home. There's parts of building our own home that I wonder if I'm ever going to get through. But truthfully, I don't know if I envision getting this far by myself. We could probably wait a month or so for the road to dry out, hire a crew to come hang tape and texture to the drywall, and have it done professionally in a very short period of time. But there's also part of me that wants to finish this myself. I feel like we're getting so close I just have to take it one step at a time.
There's part of me that feels like I would be giving up if I subcontracted the drywall and the paint and the cabinets and the trim work at this point. After getting this far, I've just got to keep my head down and finish the place up. I've got to do my best to keep the quality as high as I can, especially with the drywall. The last time I hung a large amount of drywall like this, I was about 27 years old. Myself and Cedar had decided to double the square footage of a house that we'd purchased in Gilbert, Arizona. I had subbed out the framing, the concrete, just about everything up to that point. But I had this idea that after work, I would hang the drywall to save a few bucks. I hung the drywall in one of the bedrooms and quickly realized I'd bitten off way more than I could chew. I made a few phone calls and found a drywall crew that was willing to come in and take over. The minute the professionals walked in and saw what I had done, they tore it out and started over. They figured that the time that it would take to finish the drywall that I had done would not be worth it, so they tore it out. Fourteen years later, I've got to make sure that when my father-in-law shows up sometime later this summer, that he has a reason to pat me on the back versus asking me why I didn't hire a professional crew to come and do the job right. If this process takes me longer, so be it. I've decided I'm going to take it one bedroom at a time. I've decided I'm not going to scab things together with scraps of drywall like I did last time. The bottom line is I've decided to finish the job and finish it right. Call it pride, call it being stubborn, whatever it is, I want to finish this house myself. After I get all of the drywall hung, I may bring a guy in to tape and texture it. I'm not worried about how the finished drywall is going to turn out. But I also may give it a go myself. We could texture the whole house in such a way where it hides most of the imperfections. What we've decided to do is basically a skim coat or a smooth finish that's going to show every imperfection if I don't do this right.
I've called my father-in-law, the retired drywall contractor, more in the last few weeks than I have during the entire building process. I'm sure he's getting tired of this, but he's coaching me through it. Had I built an adobe home, or a cob house, or a log cabin, there wouldn't be any drywall in it, which in turn would leave a lot more room for imperfections. Because we built a conventional home, I need to follow the conventional process and do this right. I'm glad I'm working inside because winter's not quite gone yet. And I'm confident that I can do this. It was 59 degrees yesterday. Now it's 38 with a fresh six inches of snow on the ground. I'm still working on the girl's bedroom, trying to get that finished up with the drywall. I'm gonna go ahead and try and finish the entire second story since everything is basically ready to go. And uh, I'm not gonna mess around with any of the other stuff downstairs. There's a little tiny bit more insulation I need to do downstairs, but I'm so sick and tired of doing insulation. I'm gonna focus on the drywall, get as much of it done as I can. Um, before I dive into downstairs. Uh, it's going real fast, it's going good. Um, I'm trying to do this in such a way where I don't have any more tape joints than we have to and still at the same time, not waste drywall. That's my, my dilemma, is not scabbing this thing together in such a way where I'm gonna have butt joints and tape joints everywhere. But anyway, so far so good. Um, I don't know what to say about the weather. The road's ridiculous. Cedar was gonna bring the kids up today and it's just out of control. We may try and bring him up tomorrow, but I'm gonna have to follow her up here. Um, anyway, it is what it is. We got a newborn baby colt next door that fell right in the middle of a, the mom dropped right in the middle of a snowstorm. Beautiful, healthy little uh, uh, filly. And uh, other than that, uh, nothing too exciting going on other than we're just trying to grind through this uh, drywall and get it done, so.